Okay, good afternoon, Algebra 2 Trig Honors class students. So just want to go over that chapter 6 test, simple questions. So let's take a look at that. So sketching a graph of a function. So what we got here, it's an exponential function. So what we need to find now is that all the essential element, A, the scale factor, 1 half, the base, or H, negative 2, and then k, which is 1. Again, according to that, the uh, transformational form, it's always considered a times b to the power of x minus h plus k. So another thing we notice, the value of k, which is considered the horizontal asymptote, So any time that we started with the exponential function with the graph, so always started with the value of k, so y equals 1, so that would be right here. And now another thing that we need to find out is the points. So we need to get at least two points, or maybe more. So we try to use an easy number, so start with negative 2. This negative 2 plus 2, that would give you 0. So 4 to the power of 0, that's 1. 1 times 1 half, that's 1 half. And then 1 half plus 1, which is 3 half. So negative 2 comma 1.5. So negative 2. And then up here, 1.5. And now what else do we need to figure it out? So let's find out the uh, y-intercept. So for the y-intercept, that means x must be 0. So 0 plus 2, then that would be considered 2. 4 to the second power, that's 16. 16 times 1 half, which is 8. 8 plus 1, then that would be 9. Okay, so we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way up here. Try to extend the y-axis. So eventually the graph is going to be considered exponential growth. Okay. So I've got to be careful with the way that you connect those points. So this one is connected with the dot. And now the thing that you might want to be considered doing, the domain and range. So stay the domain and the range. So as you can see that x column, we can use any number. So that means the domain, it's all real number. And then for the range, it's all about the restrictions with the asymptote. So this one is considered 1 all the way to infinity. Okay, so now what about another one, number 2, right? An equation for the graph. So without any transformations, without any phase shift, and also vertical translation, so we can use that y equals a times b to the power of x. So starting with the y-intercept, so plugging that 0 and 4 for x and y. So we do have 4 equals a times b to the power of 0. So b to the power of 0, that's 1. So that means the value of a is 4. And then using the same model, so y equals a b to the power of x. So we just want to put in 1 and 8, 1 comma 8. So a is y. And then a we found it already, which is 4, times base b to the first power. So solve for b, so divided by 4 both sides, so that means b is considered 2. And then we just want to rewrite it, so y equals 4 times 2 to the power of x. So this one, it's one of the exponential growth model. And then for number 3, sketching the graph for the logarithmic function. So for those you might be wondering, the transformational form is always written as log a times log base b of the quantity x minus h plus k. So the value of a, it's considered 1. And now how do you define the value of h for the quantity? So we just want to set the inner parentheses, the quantity of the parentheses equals 0, and then we solve for h from here. So we do have 3x equals negative 13, so that means x equals negative 13 over 3. So then that'd be the va. And now, what about for uh, the value of k? So the value of k, compare and contrast, that's a separated constant, so that would be negative 2. Okay, so starting with the graph, negative 13 over 3 with the VA. Okay, 
okay so we got some space right here and the value of a so we're going to put it into the uh, xy table so start it off with the uh, vertical asymptote so negative 13 over 3 so what is that about so that one is about negative 4 and 1 third so negative 4 and 1 third So somewhere over here, negative four and one third. For the value of H. And now we want to set up the XY table to get some points. So we can find out some position here. And one thing that we notice, the base is not shown. So that means the base is always 10. In order to get the same quantity to 10 here, so we want to use negative uh, let's see. So we want to use x equals negative 1. Because that negative 1 times 3, that will give you negative 3. Negative 3 plus 13, which is 10. So log base 10 of 10, that's 1. Again, log base b of the same base is always 1. So 1 minus 2, which is considered negative 1. So negative 1 comma negative 1. Another thing that we notice, log base b of log base 10 of 1, so that equals 0, because that 10 to the 0 power, it's always 1. Log form to the exponential form. So in order to make the quantity as 1 here, so we would like to use negative 4, because negative 4 times 3, then that would be negative 12. Negative 12 plus 13, that's 1. So log base 10 of 1, that's 0. 0 minus 2, negative 2. So negative 4, negative 2. And then for the rest of the position, we just simply connect them. So another thing that you want to find out, the domain and the range. So the domain for this one, with the restrictions, the VA. So that means anything that's greater than negative 13 over 3, all the way to infinity. And then for the range, there's no restrictions. So this one is increasing gradually. So that means it's negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have for the next one. I believe this one is a minus 5. Okay, so now for the next problem here. So we do have natural log of quantity x plus 4 minus 5. So anytime they see that the base with the natural log is not shown, that means always e. And the value of e is always considered 2.7. 1, 8, blah, blah, blah. It's an irrational constant. Okay, so the value of E, 2.7, 1, 8, something. Irrational constant. Okay, so now, again, compare and contrast. So the form is always written as A, natural log of X minus H plus K. So the value of A, that's considered 1, and the value of H, which is what? Negative 4. And the value of K, which is negative 5. And now, so start it all with the, uh, the value of K. No, the value of H, excuse me. Because that's a VA, which is negative 4. Quite similar to the previous one that we did. Okay, so... 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's negative. And now we want to set up the xy table. So one thing that we notice, natural log of e, it's always 1. And natural log of 1, it's always considered 0. In order to make this quantity as e, so that means for x we're using e minus 4. So 2.7 minus 4, which is considered negative uh, 1.3. Okay, so negative 1.3 for the x value. Okay, so once you plug in negative 1.3, so you end up with e here, because that e minus 4 plus 4, then that would be considered e. And then natural log of e, that's 1. And then 1 minus 5, then that would be considered negative 4. So negative 1.3 and negative 4, so it's down here, quadrant 3. 
And now another thing that we notice, natural log of 1 is always 0. In order to get this quantity to become 1, so we want to use negative 3. So negative 3 plus 4, that's 1. Natural log of 1, that's 0. 0 minus 5, negative 5. So negative 3, negative 5. So negative 3, negative 5, all the way down here. So this point is getting very close to the vertical asymptote. And then all you need to do is just simply connect those dots. Okay, so define the domain and the range for this. So the domain for this one. So x must be greater than negative 4. So anything from negative 4 to infinity. And then for the range, all real number, negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so for the graph. And now for the rest of this, it's all about solving equations. So for the exponential equations, so the one that we need to find out here is the common base. So for that 1, 9, this one can be written as 3 to the power of negative 2. So 3 to the power of negative 2 to the power of 2x plus 2. And then 2, 34. So think about that with the common base 3. So we try to divide it by 3 here. Let's see. So 3 to the power of 4, then that would be 81. So maybe we need to break it apart 5 consecutive times. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So 3 to the power of 5. To the power of 1 minus 3x. And then 81 is just written as 3 to the power of 4. So power to the power, that means we need to multiply those powers, the exponents. So 3 to the power of negative 4x minus 4. And then 3 to the power of 5 minus 15x. So that equals 3 to the power of 4. And then same base, that means we need to combine the exponents together. So 3 to the power of negative 4x plus negative 15x, then that would be negative 19x. And then negative 4 plus 5, then that would be plus 1. So that equals 3 to the power of 4. Same base, we just cancel them out. So now, what this one becomes is a linear equation. So negative 19x plus 1 equals 4. And then solve for x. So negative 19x, so that equals 3. And then divided by negative 19 both sides. So x equals 3 over negative 19. Okay, so that's the exponential equation. And now let's do another one. So another exponential equation with the base e. So again, if that's the base e, that means we need to apply natural law. So first thing that you want to do, you want to get rid of the negative 2 first. To separate a constant, because this one is not related with the, the base. So it's negative 10 e to the power of negative uh, 4n minus 2. So add 2 both sides. So we do have negative 29 plus 2, which is negative 27. And then divided by negative 10 both sides. So we do have e to the power of 4n minus 2. So that equals 2.7. And now for the e here, so we just want to get rid of that e. Take the natural log both sides. So we got 4n minus 2 equals natural log of 2.7. And then now from here, so we just want to add 2 on both sides. So natural log of 2.7 plus 2 divided by 4 both sides. So n equals natural log of 2.7 plus 2 all over 4. And that's the solution. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have on the back four. So there's so many simple questions here for the chapter six test. Okay, so we'll go with that. So solve the equation. So once again, here's another one. So this one actually it's a pretty straightforward. So basically just add six both sides. So we do have 10 to the power of negative 9p. So that equals 60, well 58, excuse me. And then base 10, so that means we're using log. So we take log. So log base 10 of 58. So that equals negative 9p. And for those who might be wondering, can I use natural log? Take natural, natural log both sides. Yeah, you can do it either way. So for this one here, it's considered log base 10. 
of 58 divided by negative 9, so that equals 3. And for those who might be wondering what log of base 10 of 58 is, so that one is just like a change of base formula. So log of 58 over log of 10, and all over negative 9, so that equals 3. And one thing that we notice, log of 10 is always considered 1. So this one can be written as log of 58 over negative 9. Okay, so now the rest of the problem here, find inverses. Again, anytime they want to find the inverse of a function, you want to swap the variable first. Well, if the function is already written in terms of x, y form, so always switch the variable. Okay, so for this one, so swap the variable. And now for those who might be wondering, the log, how do we get rid of that log here? Keep that in mind, we can always convert this one back in four log form, exponential form, so the base is 10. Again, the base is not shown, it's always 10. So 10 to the power of x, the exponent, and then the result. So 2y to the power of 5 plus 7. Now the next step here, subtract 7 on both sides. Again, the constant is not related with the base. And then divide everything by 2. So we end up with y to the power of 5. So that equals 10 to the power of x minus 7 over 2. And then what about the power? So back to the previous chapter, the radical functions. So we can always raise up this one to the reciprocals of the given power. So raise up to the power of 1 fifth. So we do have inverse of f of x. So that would be 10 to the power of x minus 7 all over 2. The whole quantity to the power of 1 fifth. Okay, so now what about for b and c? So B and C, those are quite similar. So first thing that you want to do, you want to swap the variable. Okay, so let's see. So for part B here, so Y. So Y equals natural log of 4X to the power 3 plus 1. So swap the variable. And then solve for Y in terms of X. Subtract 1 both sides. And then take the base e, because one thing that we notice, e to the power of natural law, so that's just 1. It's called a unit identity. So e to the power of x minus 1, so that equals 4y to the power of 3. Excuse me. And then you want to solve for y in terms of x. So in order to solve for y in terms of x, so you divide by 4 on both sides. So now we do have e to the power of x minus 1 over 4, so that equals y to the power of 3. And then take the cube root both sides. And that would be the inverse of... And now for C, that one looks kind of a little bit difficult. So that's the base power E, uh, base E to the power of X, and then plus the rest of the fractions, the constant. So again, it's the same process. So we'll take a look at that. Just want to get more space here. Okay, so X equals E to the power of Y plus 8, all over 3 to the power of 1 4. In order to get rid of the power, again, raise out the power to its reciprocal, multiply by 4 into the power. So we do have x to the power of 4, so that equals e to the power of y plus 8, all over 3. And now for those who might be wondering, what can we do after this? Either you can cross multiply, or you can simply multiply by 3 on both sides. Okay, so here at the 3. So now we do have 3x to the power of 4, so that equals e to the power of y plus 8. And then subtract. A both side. And now from here, take the natural log of both sides. Because you want to get rid of that natural log of E. So we do have Y equals natural log of 3X to the power 4 minus 8. And again, we don't want to use that y because that we use this one for the original function already. 
So this one is written as inverse of f of x. And now for the rest of this. Solving for x again. So this one is about condensing. So anytime they see like two log with the same base, two natural log with the same base, so that means you want to condense the left-hand side or the right-hand side first. So try to condense that with the property, what we got here, log of base b of x plus log base b of y. So this one is always considered log base b of x times y. Expand the form to the condensed form, or the condensed form to the expanded form. So try to condense the left-hand side. We do have log base b, which is 10, of negative 4x minus 7 times 5. So that equals log of base 10, 21. Again, the base is not shown, so it's always 10. And then for the rest of this, log base 10, we can cancel them out. So what's left here is just negative 20x minus 35 equals 21. So now we just turn everything from the nonlinear form to the linear form. In the rest of this, we just want to solve for the two-step linear equation. Add 35 both sides. So 21 plus 35, then that would give you 56. And then divide by negative 20. And this one is not divisible, but that it's reducible. So once you reduce, so you want to divide it by four both sides. So we do have negative 14 over five. Now here's another thing you want to check. Make sure that the quantity that you put in back to the original equation here. So the domain is always considered greater than zero. Because one thing we notice the parent graph of log is always like this. So the domain for x is always greater than zero. So that means this inner quantity. So the result is always greater than zero. So what happens if you plug in negative 14 over 5 back here? So eventually this quantity is going to be positive. So that means we satisfy the condition. And same thing happened with the natural law. So make sure that the quantity, whatever the value of x that you find out, so you need to plug in a number back here and make sure that the domain got to be created in zero. So again, condense. So natural log of 2x minus 7 times 5 uh, divided by 5, because that's a minus. So that, if that's a difference, so that means it's corresponding to quotient. Expanded form, it's a difference, so that means it's a quotient. The reason why that is because that natural log of x minus natural log of y is the same as natural log of x over y. And then the right-hand side, so that's net, uh, natural log of 13. So again, take base e both sides, so we can get rid of that e to the power of natural log. And what we found here is 2x minus 7 over 5 equals 13. And then multiply by 5, both sides. So we do have, okay, let me just erase all of this. So what we found here is 2x minus 7. So that equals 5 times 13, which is 65. 3 times 5 is 15. 1 times 5, 5 plus 1, so 65. And then 2x, so that equals 72 divided by 2, both sides. So x is what, 36. Again, checking the word by plugging a number back to the original quantity, so making sure that this one is satisfied the domain. It is greater than zero, so this one is totally fine. And now the last two problems, so expand and simplify the following. So expanding form, expanded form to condensed form. Well, condensed form to the expanded form, excuse me. So let me just erase all of that. So let me put it right here. Natural log of 6 root of u times v to the power of 1 third times w to the power of pi. So by the time you expand it, so start with the product first, product to sum. So it's natural log of u to the power of 1 6. Again, radical form to the exponential form. And then plus natural log of v to the power of 1 third plus natural log of w to the power of pi. And then using that, the third property of logarithm or natural logarithm, so we can just bring down the power, power to coefficient, so 1 6 natural log of u plus 1 third natural log of v, and then plus pi natural log of w, okay, so the expanded form, 
And then the last one, you want to apply the given conditions to verify that log of base 7 of 1 over 112. So we want to use the condition to simplify the complicated log expression. Okay, so let's try to expand it first. Again, follow through the instruction. So by the time they expand this out, so we do have log base 7 of 1 minus log base 7 of 112. And one thing that we notice, log base 7 of 1, that's considered 0. Well, the reason why that I do know, because once you set it back to the exponential form, this one is considered 7 to the power of 0 equals 1. So that's why the result here, it's 1. And now what about for that log base 7 of 112? So for the 112, so we want to set up the factor tree for 112. Again, according to the, uh, according to the condition we have right here, we do have log base 7. Well, this one I put, I put it twice. So log base 7 of 4, it's 0.7. Log base 7 of 11, it's 1.2. And I believe this one is supposed to be log base 7 of 6. So let me check back with my computer here. It's like 0.9 or something. It is. Okay, so 112. So try to break it apart, 112. So let's say this one is divisible by 4. So 4 times what? 32? No, 4 times... Okay, let's see. Uh, 28. So that's 112. 4 times 8, 32. 4 times 2, 8. Plus 3, 112. And now 28, we can break it apart. So this one could be considered what? 4 and 7. All right. So now this one can be written as 4 squared times 7. So in other words, this one can be written as log base 7 of 4 squared times 7. And now we're going to use the conditions to verify, to simplify this whole quantity. So 0 is gone, so it's negative log base 7 of 4 squared times 7. And then using the property, product to sum, and then power to coefficients, so we can expand it. So this one can be written as negative log base 7, 4. And then for the 2, we can just put it right in front. Okay, so the negative, we just want to separate a negative outside. And then times 7, so that means plus log base 7 of 7. And one thing that we notice, log base 7 of 7 is always 1. Okay, so that quantity is always 1. And log base 7 of 4 is 0 0.7. So what we found here, okay, let me just carry that over here. So this one is written as negative 2 times log base 7 of 4. So using the replacement, 0 0.7. And then plus log base 7 of 7, that's 1. So it's negative 1 times the quantity of the, in the parentheses. So 2 times 0 0.7, that's 1.4. And then 1.4 plus 1, then that'll be 2.4. So eventually it's going to be negative 2.4. So you've got to be careful with the way that you apply the properties. So again, what, the, what are those major properties that I need to recognize for this chapter here? So the product to sum. Okay, like this one. Quotient to difference. Power to coefficient. And then the last one. Change of base. So you see that log base b of x, it's always written as log of x over log of b. And also can be written as natural log of x over natural log of b. Same thing. Alright, that's it. So, good luck to your test. And thank you for watching the video today. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.